Welcome again to some Wargame Island Battle action. It's going to be a uh, 3 vs 3 game on the Orange Skoldsvik map. And uh, yeah, NATO consists of Lightman myself, Eagle, T-Man plays, and Packets consists of Delintz, Surrey, and General Bouch. If I remember correctly, I'm going to be playing uh, as uh, Armored West Germany. So it'll be interesting to see how I use that deck. It's one I don't use too often. And uh, yeah, this game, if anything, will also show how rusty I am with uh, using West Germany and uh, yeah, just shows how unfamiliar I'll be, I'll be with uh, much of their equipment, but uh, just... Well, just skip forward so you can actually see what I mean. And, but uh, it looks like everyone's just busy deploying. Thank God for being able to skip through replays. Well, fast forward anyway in this case. Fortunately, I can't directly skip this deployment phase, but at least I can fast forward. So there we go. Enemy team going with, uh, okay, so nothing too unusual. Crap loads of aircraft, actually, that is a bit unusual. Including uh, the air superiority aircraft, the SU-27S, that's the premium uh, air supremacy aircraft of um, your Sassar. I'm surprised, actually, they went with them so early. <laughs> need to think. I'm surprised these guys didn't take any shots at the goddamn helicopters there, but oh well. I think they were trying to get some shots off against this helicopter, but it landed and I suppose that counts as a ground target and they had to... well, they weren't able to shoot, so they just had to evac instead. So we go, fun times indeed. Looks like I've got my Dornier's coming in with uh, infantry and uh, there we go, we're going to have a nice little engagement crap loads of abs for Eagle. He should not be rushing them actually, he should just be getting them to attack rather than rushing them around these um, Stroski is bizarre enough not actually firing at any of their rockets because I think they're actually um, on the move there, so interesting how that works out. In any case, Eagle definitely screwing up a bit by having those Vabs rushing like that. He should have just put them on attack move once um, within sight of the enemy rather than just getting him to continue moving onwards. But oh well, what can you do? Another plane getting shot down by the SU-27S, so enemy uh, team are definitely uh, bringing on the pain pretty early. In fact, it looks like Hotel even is uh, in a bit of trouble actually. In fact these two Kustigers from Team and Players should probably try to move up actually otherwise the opposing team could just swoop in relatively uh, easily. Although we do have a couple of commando powers of our own from Eagle presumably going to be swooping in as well. So we'll see what happens. Montestelsky is also coming in even managing to... Oh, okay. Interesting. Actually managing to um, garrison the urban sector that is interestingly enough right in the middle of the forest. So it's like a little lumber yard, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it. And... Okay, no other buildings around there, it seems. Huh, interesting place to put them. It's too bad we didn't manage to get them before these monster Stelskis then. There's definitely going to give General Bouch a bit of an initial advantage, but oh well. Let's see what happens. More SU-27S is coming in. <coughs> to be a pain in the ass. And yeah, he's also going to be doing a bit of damage to these Lichty Schutzens. So, yeah, nothing too unexpected. Finally, my... Reinforcements are going to be coming in to, to capture these other points, so I'm not using any helicopter command vehicles, and unfortunately that is going to give our point, our, sorry, our opponents an initial score advantage. We'll see uh, how that will carry through uh, to the uh, end game. Actually, I probably should let these late to shoot al alone. I should have left them alone and just let them stumble into these Jaegers in the buildings, because as you can see, they're pretty, uh, yeah, they're pretty fancy infantry, apparently. Eggers don't seem to stand a chance against them. Yeah, well, sucks for them to say at least. And looks like we can't make any inroads into India. Foxtrot is still, well, as you can see, it's uh, no man's land at the moment, apart from the Lichtenschutzens. Are they going to continue going up for Surrey? Don't know. In any case, they're going to be sending in a couple more SPWs, maybe to just to see what's in Foxtrot. You probably should try to split them up then and uh, spread them out in that case. And yep, yeah, here comes the command vehicle, most likely for Foxtrot as well. It's going to tip things in our enemy's favour if they ma do manage to get it. But at the same time, though, once they get Echo, we'll get, be able to get a few score points in as well. What the hell? Ah, okay, we've got flames being dropped as well. Yeah, as you can see, a bit of action happening all over the place. And what do you know? There's Vezda's coming in from General Bouch. He might actually have a bit of a chance to... Hmm. Okay, it's going to be interesting. But he might have a bit of a chance to actually make it back to our territory. It's still going to be a bit of an ask. Actually, speaking of which, I really should have left something on these bridges, on this bridge at the very least. 
in case something, or well, someone from our team should lift something on this bridge, you know, just in case if they did try to sneak across. Because due to this waterway, there's uh, no other way, except for this bridge here or this bridge here, to get across. And given the fact that we, this is a main reinforcement route, um, well, chances are the enemy, enemy uh, recon infantry will not be taking this bridge. In either case, the Vezos for General Bouch are going to be pretty content to just sit around not doing anything. And as you can see, Hotel is, uh, well, is uh, deadlocked as well. So things are just completely deadlocked. Whoever takes Foxtrot will be the one to give their opponent, uh, sorry, not their opponents, will be the one to uh, give their uh, allied team score advantage and it looks like General Bouch will probably be the one to capture Foxtrot before myself. I am finally sending in some uh, reinforcements towards Foxtrot and bizarre enough even sending in a Jaeger towards presumably towards these buildings just in case I guess. Uh, not much else happening though from my end though I should be sending in another command vehicle towards Foxtrot but in any case Thankfully, General Bouch has screwed up his bike row, and uh, yeah, the command vehicle is just barely out of Foxtrot, so thank God for that. <laughs> oh, indeed, we've actually got a couple of Kustigers coming in as well for T Man plays. Wait a minute, what the hell is shooting cannons? Oh, the Noners, of course. So yeah, Kustigers coming in, and uh, yeah, given how fast they are, they're going to do a decent, do decent job in uh, dodging pretty much all the mortar shots, except for one that lands near them, but uh, yeah, as you can see, they're just. Uh, so bloody fast, and uh, yeah, there's just so many of them. Definitely the premier assault infantry of uh, Sweden. Too shabby indeed. I'll t if I was them, I'd try to stay a little bit stealthy though, but uh, I don't never mind actually. They seem to be doing an alright job picking off these um, BMPs with their rockets from what I can tell, so bam. Kind of well hidden, but uh, they're still surviving actually, so. Nice little line, actually. There we go. Finally, one gets taken out. We've got tank off Bandelian there. I'm not really sure what he's referring to. Maybe to get rid of the um, BMPs, or rather, rather to send them off. But in any case, yeah, unfortunately, the uh, Spence Stars are going to come in and they're going to pretty much clean up the Kustigers, especially since they've since been caught out. Even Monta Stelz is going to be coming out to them to utterly destroy them. General Bouch, I don't know why he's actually letting them far in the move like that. It should be uh, just letting them stay still and firing. But in any case, the Kustigers don't stand a chance. And bam, down they go. They do manage to do a bit of damage. In fact, they almost make their way to the uh, to the command vehicle. They must have seen it. In fact, if I was him, I would have just rushed that command vehicle. And uh, well, I mean, those guys are pretty fast. They do have decent amounts of HP. They probably would have made it to the uh, command vehicle, especially since they had next to no health. But oh well, I guess now we'll never know whether that charge would have worked or not, so... Oh well. Can you do Commandos Para coming in for Eagle, which is... Okay, that's the French Recon Squad and as for myself. Let's just have a look. A couple of ices just to keep an eye on things and a couple bit more anti-air coming in, more Recon coming in. So just securing Foxtrot and what do you know? The Command Leopard 2. <laughs> Great stuff. Plays, what the hell? Let's just get a nice sort of close in view of that tank rushing through. There we go. Just gotta love it. Bam. Yeah, good old Command Leopard 2. Can definitely take a pounding. Not as much of a pounding as the T-80U, but as you can see, it still has a decent amount of armor. And uh, yeah, it should be able to tank artillery shots in day even... Um, even cluster bombs as well, so there we go, see what happens. In either case, these Razvedas are actually going to be running into these helicopters by T-Man Plays. So pretty lucky actually that the uh, T-Man Plays even spotted these Razvedas. In fact, they should be sending in the second these other two helicopters to try to take them out. Although, well, they'll probably get taken out subsequently, but... Well, what the hell, I mean, it's not like as if these helicopters are going to do anything anyway. You could just send in infantry, I guess, or we could just send in a quick plane to bomb them, but... Yeah, whatever. Hopefully, Team Man Plays was paying attention and has noticed that they're actually there, so... There you go. In any case, yeah, here comes the Command Leopard 2 with, uh, yeah, great armor. Unfortunately, it's not the uh, Leopard 2A4, which um, is the uh, best German tank that you can get, and uh, arguably the, the best um, NATO tank that you can get, so unfortunately, yeah, it's not the Command variant of that. But the Leopard 2 is, uh, well, 
still pretty decent tank to use as a uh, command variant, so there you go. In any case, I'm going to try to advance forward myself, and there we go, I'm actually going to be capturing Foxtrot briefly, and just as well, actually, our opponents are definitely leading by a relatively sizable amount, so we'll see what happens. These proquencies, do we actually spot them? Not yet. Ah, there we go. Now we're actually spotting them with the Jupiters, I think. So yeah, they're going to be revealing themselves on the Jupiters, so hopefully I'm paying attention and I know that they're there in that case. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like Hotel is still in quite a bit of trouble. Unfortunately, that Kustigird assault didn't quite work out. Although the thing is, though, because we know that UAZ is there, some artillery shells should have been sent over towards um, Butcher's command people. That would have been more than enough to take it out, most likely. I mean, one health, and it's just a, you know an unarmed jeep. So it would have it would have gotten killed off pretty easily, actually. So yeah. Does anyone even have, have artillery? It doesn't appear to be the case, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, it's going to be hard to use artillery then in that case if we don't have any. Yeah, well, actually, just having a look. I suppose we do have that buck and a couple of eaglers. I would have said that maybe an aircraft strike would have worked, but I uh, would probably lose the aircraft as a result. In any case, Belch definitely uh, using artillery to its fullest, and I did not mean to. Zoom into it like that, but there you go. Marta 102s are going to be panicked a little bit. And nope, this supply vehicle is going to survive from T Man Place. So it looks like he's. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, he's just playing as mixed um, NATO. Nothing too surprising there, I guess. <laughs> oh, indeed, that's myself here yeah, just trying to push forward slowly but surely. This UAZ is still outside of the Foxtrot's. Um, Foxtrot's uh, command zone. So it sucks to be in. And oh well, can you do? So yeah, sending in a couple of tanks, sending in my Jaegers as well, just to tank damage, presumably. Too bad I'm not sending in some actual uh, anti-air as well. Let's see. So yeah, one thing I didn't notice about these uh, Flak Panzer Japards was their range versus helicopters. As you can see, they can outrange pretty much all ATGMs fired by helicopters, except for those really um, specialized ones. Uh, I can't remember what they were called. I think the so-called was one of them. Yeah, I think so. They can equal the uh, Japard's range. Well, actually, no, I think it actually slightly outranged the Japard. But in any case, yeah, pretty good range against helicopters. So, yeah, the problem with uh, my use of them is that I was sending them far too close to the helicopters, and then the helicopters were able to get off shots against the Japards while they uh, tried to destroy them with. Ouch, that guy's gonna get taken out. Anyway. Yeah, um, while well, I tried to tr sorry, try to destroy them at uh, too close of a range. And it looks like my plane unfortunately gets shot down at the last second, so losing planes left and right. Those Su 270s seem to just be uh, too bloody powerful. Not really sure what whose aircraft that was, but another one of ours going down in either case. ATGMs are going to have a bit to worry about, although it's interesting using um, smoke like that. Despite the fact that it's these guys who would pr really pose the threat to the Motostelskis. But there we go, actually, they have a combination of smoke and uh, napalm being used against these Legion bastards. They're slightly worried, but not shaken, so there we go. Actually, my Karani Yagd Panzer should be able to do a bit of damage against them. And. Am I going to get them to stand still? Nope, I'm just getting them to continue going on. Yeah, to continue onwards. I think I was trying to, yeah, flank the UAZ. But unfortunately, as you can see, this path puts them right in the. well, right in the middle of enemy fire, so I don't know why exactly I was trying to just rush here, knowing that this area is kind of open, I mean it's just barely a, a few meters across the river to get to this other area controlled by the enemy, so I'm not really sure why I did that. I'm still keeping two cannon and Jagdpanzers behind for no particular reason, even though they don't have a chance against the T-64BMs. Oh well, and this UAZ is... it's still... <laughs> Oh my god, it's still um, too far back. Well, there we go, it is giving us three points, thank god for that. Just having a look what's happening elsewhere, it looks like Hotel is... Well, it's still in a bit of a deadlock, that is, Vezda was finally taken out. Our Commando's Paras are content just to sit around as well, so... Just to see what the reinforcements are, I suppose, from Juliet. What the hell is this command helicopter doing? I wonder if these Paras spotted that. <laughs> Well, maybe not given the uh, command, I guess, uh, the command, given the uh, terrain, I guess. Oh well, in any case, yeah, Cannon and Yard Panzers still trying to cut across. Worried and panicked, though, they're not going to be able to do too much. Although, if I kept on going, though, wait a minute, just have a look. 
Okay, I don't know where the CV is, but if I kept on going, I mean, I, the CV can only be in so many locations. <laughs> in any case, yeah, I think I did actually spot it. Let's just have a look. Yeah, well, actually, yep, I do see something, which I surmise to be the CV, most likely. Stuff I'd also coming in to drop some bombs against it, and I believe it's been taken out. Let's just have a look. Nope, unfortunately, it manages to barely dodge the bombs. Pretty good micro by General Boucher, I have to admit. Pretty bad micro by myself letting those Dorniers get taken out. I think they were just being sent there as uh, general support, really. I think too fancy, and uh, yeah, this is where, uh, where I really uh, screw up. Pretty badly throughout the game is that I keep using this reinforcement route, and uh, eventually the opponents will uh, capture this area, or rather secure it a bit more, and they'll have ATGMs basically guarding this section of the road, and unfortunately I'll let quite a few units run through that still and they'll get taken out. I can't remember, but I think my attention was elsewhere for some reason when I was reinforcing, so yeah, yeah definitely need to be, be careful with uh, where I'm, re sorry, where I'm uh, reinforcing from, to say the least. Oh well. You guys, yeah, trying again to go forward with my leopards, which uh, is, yeah, certainly a commendable effort. The problem is, though, is that I'm not sending any freaking anti-air with them. At least I do manage to save the Leopard 1A4 and the Leopard 2A4, much more importantly as well, so... Definitely a bit of a scrub on my behalf though, not sending any freaking anti-air, and I even had anti-air here. For fuck's sake, I should have sent that al along with my other... Well, with my tanks basically. I had BGSs to spot, probably could have sent out some infantry as well, maybe just to tank a bit of damage. But uh, yeah, definitely a bit of a scrub rushing without any uh, anti-air support. Not really sure why I did that, but... Uh, yeah, well, because yeah, German tanks in general, they do get pretty good stabilizers, as you can see, compared to the, uh, well, compared to tanks from other nations, which makes them better for firing on the move, but at the same time, you can't expect them to stand up against things like helicopters without anti-air support, at the very least, though, the, um, oh, there we go, these, uh, Japads are trying everything possible to aim at the helicopters, I think I lost one of them just there and then. These guys are not that cheap, actually. Yeah, 40 points apiece, and they're radar-based as well, actually. Which means that the anti-radar guys are going to have a hell of a time in uh, taking them out. Although, one of them does go down, actually, so that's not too bad. But these helicopters are managing to stay alive are just fine and dandy. So, sucks, but I will. At least I do manage to ward the uh, helicopters off, so they won't be able to force me off this position that easily. Unfortunately, one of my Japads does get a little bit too close for comfort, to say the least. And you saw, I mean, two of them, I'm pretty sure two of them were firing at the same time as those, those helicopters, and neither of them went down. The problem with relying on AAA against helicopters is that, uh, well, it's... It doesn't... Unless if you're up against NATO helicopters, I suppose, it, um, it doesn't take out he enemy helicopters that quickly, because it's AAA, for God's sake. But oh well, let's keep doing Continuing to uh, fly in reinforcements, and there's Japan. I barely managed to get him out of there. Actually, what, was the other missile meant for the Kaler? I'm not entirely sure, but in any case, missiles that were heading towards the uh, Flak Panzer uh, did veer off course. I think it managed to get out of range just barely in time. Thank God for that. Commandosis of the enemy team actually starting to go in, and what do you know, actually, Sari will be able to get some damage done, although Team man plays barely manages to get the Roland out of there, Commandosis is not actually going to be changing course at all, instead they will be capturing this um, rather unfortunate logistics vehicle, although maybe not, we'll see what happens. Huh, interesting. Interesting indeed. Okay, now th I think this Roland will most likely get taken out. I'm not sure why two man players didn't try to move him out of there. Yep, down he goes. Four Panzer Grenadiers coming in should be more than a match for them, but still kind of sucks to say the least, especially since those are very same Rollins could have been used against these helicopters before going to town on these starships, stunning the shit out of them. Thankfully, we do have our own anti -air, air helicopters coming in as well, and as you can see, shooting down these mi 8 ts pretty freaking quickly, so thank god for dedicated anti-air helicopters. Not bad. Just having a look at what's happening in Foxtrot, so, yep, still alive. Horses are getting whittled down, but at the same time, I am sending reinforcements in, but yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This intersection is being covered by uh, ATGMs, as you can see. 
those regular tanks and all that, which basically means it's going to be completely unsafe for me to use, but for whatever reason I don't seem to notice until uh, later on in the game. But we are still winning at the very least. We'll see actually how, what this thing is going to do. Is it going to shoot anything? No, it's just going to be back. Ah, oh, well. So, yeah, we, do, we are still winning, but only just. It's definitely anyone's game at this point, and what do you know, I'm going to even get... Let's see, I'm not sure what that seed craft hit, if anything. But in any case, it did get shot down thanks to Eagle's craft. Thank God for that. I still have to worry about the uh, ground based ATGMs and tanks as well. My Roland, who I did get him to cut across at the very least, which I suppose is better than nothing. But uh, yeah, I should have been a little bit more careful. This Roland, who I don't know how the hell he's still alive, actually. He's pretty freaking lucky, to say the least. Well, there we go. Fine, he's going to be heading down towards this little uh, encampment here, but uh, he is going to take a... well, actually no. That shot missed him. Next shot probably won't. Bam. Barely managing to survive that. His Dorniers will kind of get taken out as well, which kind of sucks, but I will. And yeah, now we've got a counter-attack by De Lintz, and probably going to... yep, there goes the uh, Rollins too, and those things aren't too cheap either, to say the least. I think I sent the Dorniers here just to see if they're infantry there, and apparently there's not, so I'll probably be sending in these guys as well. Leopard 24 of my own trying to flank, but it doesn't quite work out. He still can't, actually. I could have... well, yeah, probably could have kept on pressing gone. Actually, no, with all the combined firepower, probably... actually, it would have been taken out. So, there we go. I just decide to treat him instead. I really should have some recon out here as well actually, just to try to spot anything going down this road. And, oh, actually that's another thing I didn't notice. This uh, India zone, bizarrely enough, it actually extends onto this side of the river, so I could have actually got a command vehicle there to uh, neutralize it. Although the thing is, if I can actually secure this area enough to get a command vehicle here, then I could conceivably get rid of this command vehicle as well. So I probably could have, should have done that first rather than trying to go around like that. But in any case, I'm going to be hanging around there. Why not, eh? This helicopter is going to be a pain in the ass. I'm sending in some anti-air infantry, which is a nice idea in theory, but because I'm sending them right into the middle of enemy uh, AT gems and all that, it's uh, yeah, not exactly going to work out too well for me. In any case, one of the SU-27S go goes down, thank God for that. Hotel, we've still got a stalemate happening there, nothing much happening in Charlie either. In fact, eh, we seem to have a bit of a quiet period happening. I do have two Fern Sparrow Fern squads Sorry, Fernspacher, Fernspires. Well, Fernspires uh, being sent out, so they've got pretty uh, exceptional stealth. We'll see what damage they can do. They've only got a very limited amount of rockets to use, but with a bit of luck, I might be able to take out some command vehicles. We we'll just have to see what happens there. Delphin's also going to be a pain in the ass. I should got a flag panzer to uh, try to shoot a bit, but uh, it's, yeah, actually no, it does it does go down, but it does manage to shoot um, or rather to drop its napalm. Keller actually deciding to retreat out of the napalm straight into uh, awaiting uh, enemy tanks, which is not going to work out too well. The 2A4 is still alive, thankfully, and so is my command leopard as well. This 2A4 somehow manages to make its way through, but uh, yeah, we're heavily damaged and panicked. It's definitely going to suck to say the least. Actually, one thing that opponents really could do with in Foxtrot um, is a bit more anti air. I didn't actually realize that they uh, didn't even have. Um, Radar based anti air. They are sending up to a Tunguska, they do have a, a, uh, an Afghansky, but uh, they probably could do a bit more actually. And here we go, here comes the. <laughs> okay, actually sending him off there. Okay, actually spots the T 64 BMs first. So, in any case, yeah, it's finally sending up the T the uh, Leopard 2A4 to do a bit of damage. Managed to take out one of the T 64 BMs, but uh, yeah, he's too far forward for anti-air to really be uh, too effective then. I'm not really sure what the hell that was, but that was taken out. We do have some anti-air here, with no fuel, but yeah, this Amiga manages to get out pretty easily. Leopard 2A4 is forced to retreat once again. He's still alive though, shaken, but not stirred, and uh, not dead yet either. And it looks like they are trying to bombard my um, command vehicle as well. Hopefully they didn't see that it was an actual Leopard 2, although they're probably going to suspect at some point, and they were not really sure why exactly I decided to send in this Leopard on his own. Especially given how this Leopard's 2A4 was kind of struggling, but, uh, oh well. And yep, this guy's going to fall to ATGMs from bloody helicopters, of course, so yeah, it's sending him way too far forward, to say the least. In fact, what I should have done is maybe try to send in some infantry here, maybe some anti-air infantry as well, 
to sort of act as uh, forward anti-air and some recon as well to act as forward spotters especially since we don't actually have any recon for Eagle around India for some reason, not really sure why very uh, strange indeed, Commandos is just sitting around for sorry <laughs> and yeah, I've still got a bit of a uh, stalemate there definitely a very tense situation though my fern spahars are slowly but surely making their way through Although they do have their own in recon vehicle sword, is this thing? Ah, it's got exceptional uh, optics, of course, and it's an OT65RL. Will they actually spot my phone spires? No, they don't. No, actually, they did. They did spot them just then, and they're spotting the second one as well. Okay, so that's interesting to know. I didn't actually see what that steam message was because I wanted to see. <coughs> Sorry, I wanted to see if these guys were spotted or not. And uh, what do you know? They actually did spot them. <coughs> yeah, just needing to burp there as well. Uh, sending in a couple of Dorniers as well, just to make sure there aren't, you know, command vehicles heading around in forward positions. SU-27S is probably going to finish them off. It really sucks how these Fern Spahars were spotted, but nothing seems to be... Well, there's nothing being sent out against them. And I actually managed to get a squad into the uh, little hedgerow. Actually, is this what this is? Dense hedged farmland. We'll call it a hedgerow. Oh, never mind. There we go. Yeah, now they remain hidden. Thank God for that. And I do finally spot the uh, recon vehicle as well. Actually, does he see my... does he still see my friend Spires? No, he doesn't see them anymore. New problemo, and these Dorniers are going to come in presumably to, to take out the uh, recon vehicle, the OT-65RL. Interesting name. Which country was that again? Ah, oh, that was Czechoslovakia. New problemo, and I might even be able to take him out, although the only problem is though, I'm only using Dorniers against him, and he does, as you can see, he does have a bit of armor on him. And as for that message from Glarfair, I think it was from Glarfair, I think that's just got to do with um, wanting to play Wargame Aliens Battle as well. I'm just in the middle of a replay, but uh, well, I might play another game once I... Oh, okay. Anyway, once I um, have a look at what's happening in this replay, as you can see, things are definitely on a knife's edge. We're winning, but only just. Only just. And we've got this really annoying uh, Soviet aircraft coming in, which is kind of funny because in the previous round, it was the um, NATO aircraft that were really annoying. Wow, this thing is really low flying, actually. In fact, it almost looks like it could have um, could have run into those shells. In fact, that, kind of, that would have been funny, but I'm pretty sure that's not actually simulated in the game. Let's have a look at what this one's doing. Ah, oh, it's just evacuating. Damn, I was kind of hoping for a bit more action. Ah, oh, well, in any case, the OT65 RL does manage to survive. He does back off a bit, which means I should have a bit more space to operate, thank god for that. And this Fernspacher is coming in, he might be able to take out the Scott, this Fernspacher, this Fernspacher also coming in, might be able to take out the command helicopter as well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Just have a look, yep, supplies continuing to flow in and out. And yeah, my stuff is mostly staying alive, falling prey to AT gems though, which really sucks, especially since I don't have any of my own AT gems really. Actually, I'm pretty sure I've got Rakuten Jagdpanzers, which are kind of shitty, but they're cheap, so there we go, there's that to consider. In either case, there we go, finally make it to the Scots, and bam, the second rocket takes out Golf. And yeah, that actually manages to put us ahead in terms of score points, and I've got another fur Fern Spacher coming in as well, maybe might be able to take out this command helicopter, I don't know. In any case, another Scots being queued up for Delane. Lake to Schutzens are probably going to take out the Fern Spacher's. In fact, I should have actually retreated them as quickly as possible. I should have known that there would be uh, retribution against them, and I'm pretty sure, given that they're recon infantry, they should be faster than Lake to Schutzens. They should be able to outrun them. I'm pretty sure my Fern Spacher is going to be spotting this uh, Scot coming in as well. Not that it matters too much. Actually, it does matter a bit. Could have possibly have taken it out, maybe of aircraft or something like that. But oh well, I, sh I should be taking out this command helicopter at the very least. And we do have more score points coming in, and given the uh, stalemate that we've otherwise been enduring for the past so many minutes, several minutes I guess, <laughs> it's um, definitely a breath of fresh air to actually take out that command vehicle, especially in such a uh, high value zone as well. In fact, I might even be able to repeat that with Kilo. So there we go. It's kind of funny, playing with... Uh, I'm playing um, Germany, uh, West Germany, with an armoured focus, and yet I'm doing so much damage, mostly with hidden infantry, rather than with my actual tanks. <laughs> Just kind of funny. This Leopard 2, thankfully, w weathering the storm, and... 
Here we go, looks like this helicopter will eventually get taken out. In fact, these guys, oh, they're using their sniper rifles, actually. Or single sniper rifle to take out the helicopter. Huh, well, there you go, it's a nice little touch. Well, I suppose it was unarmored, so... It would be vulnerable to uh, small arms fire, I guess, which is what the uh, sniper rifle counts as. In case, there we go, nice clean kill on that helicopter, and we still got plus one points incoming, so... And given that that was also a reinforcement zone, they'll have to send in a CV from somewhere else, all the way from Juliet, actually, or from one of their existing points, which they probably won't want to do, given that all their points are worth more um, score points in general. In the case, by... Damn. My Leopard 2, my Command Leopard 2 does get taken out. I think it was the one of these T-80BVs that took it out. I think that's what happens. Kind of sucks, but oh well. It's a hardy tank, but not invincible to say the least. Thankfully though, I do still have uh, two Leopard 2A4s and Capone's uh, 70 killers as well. And yeah, they're doing a good job firing against... I think they're firing against the Afghanski actually by the looks of things. And yep, down goes one of them. I should actually just retreat this the second one since he has panicked, although yeah, actually these guys are calm as you can see, which really sucks. Ah oh, well, Leopard 24 is coming in to help out, and uh, yeah, they might actually be able to do a bit of damage. They are going to possibly fall prey to ATGMs, although no, they're actually close enough to be able to take on the T-80BV in um, cannon combat, and that's exactly where they're going to excel, and yep, as you can see, managing to uh, jam up the weapons of the T-80BV pretty decisively, it's going to be forced back, and it is gone. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do lose my Capenza killers, but what the hell, these Leopard 24s are still alive, at the very least, and uh, actually I could do a little bit more anti-air for that matter, but oh well. So yeah, still alive, and of course, yep, I'm going to be sending these guys in for this reinforcement zone. Oh my god. It's funny how things can seem so ridiculous when you see them in hindsight. But yeah, going down this reinforcement zone again and again and again. Uh, just to get ATGMs to death. Well, actually, wait a minute. Because they attacked with their longer range stuff, it actually looks like this reinforcement zone is... It's actually good to go again, it seems. Huh, great to think. Okay, then. Oh, well, there we go, yes, yeah, it's, it's apparently open. So, yeah, I'm going to continue sending in these Leopard 2A1s. Thankfully, there aren't any any uh, enemy infantry here, otherwise these guys will be in a hell of a lot of trouble. But, uh, there we go, they're going to continue onwards. t BVs are going to do a bit of damage as well, but I do still manage to keep these guys alive. Retreating them. Unfortunately, these guys are going to continue going forward. I think I'm going to try to hide them into the forests. We'll see what happens. In any case, yep, the command helicopter for the lens comes in, re-securing Kilo. And they've got plus one points coming in, actually, because... Oh, yeah, that's right, because my command tank... My command tank was taken... Oh, was, sorry, was taken down, and um, I do have a command vehicle coming in, not an actual command tank. I'm pretty sure I uh, did pick a, a um, card of two command Leopard 2s. So I could have sent in a second command Leopard 2 if I really wanted to, but I guess just a regular vehicle... We'll get the job done as well, provided that it survives. We do have a Leopard, uh, sorry, not Leopard, a, a T-80BV coming in as well. This command vehicle is in a bit of trouble. He will probably... Yep, here comes the missile, and he'll probably die. Bam. Oh, man, what the hell was I thinking? Don't you know, and this guy, I think, has been revealed as well. Let's have a look. Yep, he certainly has been. And he certainly is not going to be able to do much of those critical effects. But, uh, well, what the hell, we did manage to, through uh, use of hidden infantry, yeah, we did manage to take out the uh, command vehicles in Golf and in Kilo, which is quite something, actually. So two CVs for the price of uh, two Fernspachers, not too shabby indeed, and I even got another squad coming out as well. Will I be able to uh, destroy this other squad? I I've got no idea, but at least we do have a bit of, bit of a lead at the moment. But our opponents are closing in. Hopefully I've got another command vehicle coming in, and yeah, this time I'm sending him... Sorry, I'm sending him along uh, this reinforcement path here, which should be a hell of a lot safer. So, once that comes up, it should, uh, yeah, reverse the trend to zero. And I'm still coming in with my tanks, despite the fact that I don't really have any anti-air, and just as I say that, I do have some Flak Panzers coming in, it's not much to say the least. In fact, I really need to be careful here, actually. Oh well. In any case, more artillery coming in. In fact, I'm surprised we haven't just tried to shell blindly with artillery here. I mean, we should, I'm pretty sure we must have seen the unarmored Jeep the CV at some point, but... Oh well, we're not going to do, do that. 
Sucks, but there you go. We've got a fence spider coming in instead. Might be able to take out this Scott or maybe this Scott. Oh, actually that's interesting. They're sending another Scott. Where? I'm not really sure where they're going to be sending it in. I think they might be set, sent in towards the golf zone, just to make sure that it uh, stays alive. We'll see what happens. In either case, Flakpens is coming in. Unfortunately, they do get taken out. I think one of the MI24 VPs gets taken out as well, uh, but the other one's still alive. He's panicked, and he's actually getting shot up by the Flakpanzer here. Uh, he's not dead yet, though. But there we go, another one coming in, and... This, guy's, this guy is panicked at the very least. Oh my god, look at this. I kept on moving him. I should have put him well, either on an attack move or just got him to directly attack the helicopter. Ah, man, that sucks. Yeah, well, Leopard 24s are... Well, one of them... Nope, they're both still alive. Thank god for that. Leopard 21 is still alive as well. So at least I'm keeping my uh, elite heavy tanks alive. And this Scott is either going to go towards Foxtrot or towards Golf. My friend Spaho, just leaving him here just to see what's going on. Not such a bad idea. And yet more flag panzers and such coming in. But I, but I believe they are going to be a bit too close to this helicopter and yeah, we'll get into range of the uh, ATGMs. It kind of sucks, but there we go. Looking back on this, some of the very least um, have learned quite a bit in terms of the capabilities of German equipment. And uh, yeah, just got a bit of a better idea as to what the hell opponents were actually doing as well. God damn, those annoying uh, MiGs. I believe those were the ones with the, with the ATGMs. Now, we're just having a look. We uh, still don't really have anything decisive happening near India or hotels. So nothing too surprising there. Actually, one thing that's kind of surprising is that we don't have more recon infantry just trying to go down this flank, because as you can see it is relatively open. Got a couple of abs and a couple of things scattered here, but there is definitely an open path for them to follow. These commandos para for Eagle, uh, well I can appreciate him wanting to keep them safe just to see what they're reinforcing with, but really you only need one squad Okay, so that's where they reinforce from. Yeah, you only need one squad to actually uh, spot what they're reinforcing with. The second squad could be sent out, you know, to try to destroy the command vehicle, for example, but, uh, well, given the amount of stuff we've got here, they'd probably get detected, but still, it would have been worth a shot, I reckon. Ah, oh, well, in case French Spahers are going to be spotting a bit, let's just see what exactly it is that I see. Yep, I'm going to be seeing the soak hole, which is the one with the... Oh, never mind, that's not actually the one with the uh, long-range ATGMs. So we're thinking of something else. Well, in either case, we do have the two Scots, and, yeah, just wisely keeping the... Indeed, uh, wisely keeping the phone spires away just to spots rather than um, because you know they won't be able to take out both scots. They probably will be able to take out one of them maybe if the so call wasn't there. But yeah, taking out the second one will be a bit of a tall order. In any case, we do get a pretty good artillery strike, managing to get one scots all the way down to two bars of health and panicked. He's still alive though. And I do believe, yep, I was sending in a Tornado IDS to take out the, the second one here as well. So fortunately opponents were getting plus one incoming, 171 to 160. It's going to be incredibly close, especially since we've got one minute to go. And nothing really much happening in Hotel or India. Quite a bit of it is going to come down to whether or not we can take out these command vehicles of our opponents. So let's just get this Tornado IDS selected. Bam. And... Bam! There goes the command vehicle. Unfortunately, my uh, yeah, my airplane does go down. One Scot remains, but it is vulnerable to artillery, and we do have an artillery barrage coming in. Unfortunately, it's going towards where the old Scot was, rather than this Scot, which kind of sucks. I probably should have announced to my um, teammates that I'll be attacking that one specifically, so they could have concentrated on this one. But we are still slightly ahead, though. But I'm not really sure if that's actually enough to count as a minor victory or a draw. In any case, we do have another scout, oh, sorry, not, not scout, another Scots coming in here as well. It's basically going to come down to the wire, whether we can take out this Scot or possibly this command vehicle, but we do spot this Scot and artillery barrage coming in. Shots raining all around the Scot and there we go, it is down. And that was on the uh, two-point golf sector. <laughs> Oh, but for some reason we've only got plus one coming in, and why is that? There we go, now we've got plus two. Not really sure what other points we were screwing with there, but well, in either case, there we go. Yep, 
just in the nick of time with less than half a minute to go. Down goes the last Scott. And now our points are going to tick up. Will there be enough for a minor victory? Well, you just have to stay tuned to find out. The final Scott's coming in. I don't think he'll be able to really make much of a difference, so he'll basically come in just as the timer hits zero. Yeah, just seeing what else... Oh, yeah, we do have a counter-attack by the um, opponents on Hotel as well. The UAZ is still staying alive. We might have actually taken that out as well if the um, timer didn't reach zero. But still a very close game and minor victory to us. Very minor, but still a victory nonetheless. An incredibly close game and uh, quite a learning experience on uh, how I'm supposed to be using uh, German equipment. West, West German equipment anyway. East Germany plays quite differently. <laughs> so there you go. Quite a little round indeed. Such a shame that um, one of the players left. Can't remember who it was. Pretty sure one player left beforehand. Really sucked. I don't know how much of a difference it would have made because the points would have been distributed around anyway and well, we mostly had a deadlock going on anyway. So. Uh, what the hell, still an interesting little battle. And yeah, there we go, hope you enjoyed that as well. So, I'll see you all uh, next time.